Hallelujah. So how's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly favored. What you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, 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 and glory. Let's get everybody a Bible, notebook, pencil. It's training session. We ain't Bible studies. This is training. Amen? Training for reigning. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you're trained to be a reigner. <laughs> a trainer to be a reigner. You know, when you start learning how to ride a bicycle, sometimes there's training wheels on them. Amen? Those are called boundaries. <laughs> Eventually, they come off. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Revelation 12. Yes. Revelation 12 and verse 7. I just want to encourage everyone, no matter what you're going through, you're going to go through it. Such wisdom, huh? <laughs> the word says, that those who are called and love the Lord, all things are going to work to the good. Amen? Amen? And because all things are going to work to the good, that means God is doing something all the time with us. He doesn't stop. Even when you think he stops, he doesn't stop. Sometimes you wonder, man, where are you? That's when he's really working. That's when he's really working. Gosh, why? Because they had to leave you to get something done for you. No, he's always with you. Amen? Never leaves us nor forsakes us, even when we're boneheads. Doesn't matter. He's always trying to reposition us and get us into that place. You know, so many times we're more concerned in what we're going through than what God is more concerned in what we're going through. But we want to make it his concern. Hello? Oh, Lord, you know. Yeah, I know. I'm God. But we want to explain everything to him, what's going on, like he doesn't know. Believe me, that's all you need to do is, Lord, I commit this to you. He says, I already got it. I just been waiting for you to come out of your mouth. I commit it to you. It says, cast your cares upon me, for he cares for us, right? Because there's something going on. It's called a war. It's a war. This war is not ceased, and it's not going to stop until Jesus comes. And it's going to stop for a thousand years, and then there's going to be a final war. <clears throat> In verse 7, Revelation 12, let's speak it together. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the dragon was cast out. The what? Serpent of old called the devil and Satan. Who does what? Deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So we got to understand again, sometimes we need to be refreshed. Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear. That's how he gets us. Then I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. I'm going to say the power of his Christ has come. That's through the Holy Spirit. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him. Who? The devil. The powers of darkness. The demons. By the power 
of the blood of Jesus Christ by the power of the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. I'm going to say the second, the third part there. And they did not love their lives to death. That is such a key in the arena of following the Lord, constantly denying yourself. So this war continues. The enemy's greatest weapon is deception. He has traps. He tries to snare us in anything that he, he can do. He tries to get us sick. He tries all kinds of things so that we become discouraged. Everyone say discouraged. discouraged. You know, it seems that in the natural realm, if we don't understand something, we get discouraged. When you don't understand something, you've got to turn it over to trust. Has everybody got it? See, when you don't understand something, we have a tendency to become intellectual and try and figure it all out. Amen? Amen? And by the time we try to figure it all out, it's already been done. God's already moved on to another thing, and you're still over here trying to figure it all out, man. And he's already, what? Well, part two. So when there's a time you, don't, you can't figure it all out, you just stop. And you trust. Yeah, but I need to make a decision. Look at if you don't know what the decision to make, stop. You don't make it. Because you don't want to do something on assumption. It opens the door. Remember, the devil's sly. He can outwit any one of us, but he cannot outwit the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 103. Is everybody there? <laughs> <laughs> in verse 1 let's speak it together bless the Lord all my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the Lord all my soul and forget not all his benefits oh that's one of the things the enemy wants to do cause you to forget the promises of God and his benefits what's the first benefit who forgives all of our iniquity sins transgressions and stupidity who heals all of your what? Diseases, diseases, torments. But I want you to know that there's another arena of this diseases. It's called viruses. There are specific spiritual viruses that are attacking the body of Christ even right now. They're called spiritual viruses. And it's one thing the Holy Spirit wants to begin to expose. He says, who heals all of our diseases or viruses or bondages, who redeems your life from destruction. How many of y'all know that if you can get sick with a disease, it can end up to death? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things. Why? So that your youth is renewed like the eagles, because when you begin to speak good things, you begin to change. And Deuteronomy 32 and 24. Or I can start at 23. The Lord said, I will heap disasters on them, and I will spend my arrows on them. Verse 24, it says, They shall be wasted with what? Hunger, devoured by pestilence and bitter destruction. I will also send against them the teeth of beasts, with the poison of serpents of the dust. The poison of serpents of the dust. Now, this is pretty wild. Because a virus is an infection, an infectious agent that replicates itself in a living cell or in a host. That's what a virus is. The Latin word for virus, from its original origin means slimy, liquid poison, or known as venom of a snake. It's known as venom of a snake. That's what a virus represents. And that's what he was talking about right here. He says, with poison of serpents of the dust. See, many times people don't even realize that you can be bit by a serpent. People are always looking in the physical realm. 
Or you can touch something that's unclean and it can have a virus. How many of you know that you can shake somebody's hand who just had the flu or has got the flu and you don't know it or maybe it hasn't manifested to its full manifestation. You're shaking hands with them and, hey, how's it going, hugging them. And next thing you know, you're sick the way they were sick a week ahead of time. You're sick the next week. Why? Because it spreads, doesn't it? It's called a virus. Amen. And there are spiritual viruses that are manifesting big time. And there are ways to prevent it, but we've got to begin to recognize it. That these spiritual viruses can come to steal, kill, and destroy us. In Proverbs 23, well, actually, before we go there, I want to go to verse 33. Deuteronomy 32, verse 33. Start with, uh, let's see. Uh, 30, yeah, 32 is good. 32. Let's speak it. For their vine is a vine of Sodom. Everybody remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Hello, bunch of wicked stuff. And of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are the grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of what? Serpents. So what's he trying to tell you? Alcohol. Alcohol is a virus. See, people call addiction a disease, but it's not a disease. It's actually a, a virus, but it's a spiritual bondage because it's a demon. Only demons, demonic forces, carry these viruses. Is everybody with me? So ad ad addiction really isn't what we call a disease. I mean, you know, in the physical realm, there might be a manifestation. But it's actually a virus because of the presence of an evil spirit. Because addiction is a spirit, really not a disease. And where there's a spirit, those are known as serpents. See, if a spirit was actually to come out of you and manifest, it would turn into a serpent. No matter what kind of spirit it was, it could be a spirit of nicotine, it could be a spirit of alcohol, it could be a spirit of pornography, whatever it is. When it comes out of you and manifests in the physical realm, it always turns into a serpent. Every time. Is everybody okay? So what happens is then they carry the venom, and that venom becomes a virus in me and you. It says in verse 33 that the wine is the poison of a serpents, of serpents, and the cruel venom of a what? Cobras. So there is spiritual viruses and they are con contacted and contracted in the area by being touching or being bit in Matthew in Matthew chapter 3 so what is the Latin wor original word for virus it is called slimy liquid poison or venom of a snake Next time somebody tells you they got a virus, you know, it's like, whoa, come out. <laughs> but look at all the viruses that there are and manifested physically. Well, they had to start somewhere, didn't they? All of these viruses. Proverbs 23 and 31. I mean, Matthew 3, sorry. Matthew 3, verse 1. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Am I in Matthew 3? Yeah. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make its path straight. And John himself was clothed in camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and honey, or wild honey. I love it. Everybody, it was really not flying locusts, amen? Locust was known as a nut. Again, that's where the original cereal came from, nut and honey, amen? See, John the Baptist brought it up. Although you don't have to dress with camel's hair to go get it. You go right to Publix and pay for it, you know? 
and verse 5. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan went out to meet John the Baptist and, and, were, uh, and were baptized by him in, in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when John saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees, these are the religious dudes, coming to his baptism, he said to them, what? Broad of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Why? Because they were infected. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not think to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandal I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now you've got to understand as he speaks of trees, he's speaking about people. So he's saying those who've been contaminated will be cut down. Amen? So it's important that we not be contaminated by these viruses. One of the arena, of course, we know virus is associated with sin. Hallelujah. See, but you got to understand these Pharisees and Sadducees, they were bringing something. They were not only carriers of the virus because they were contaminated, but they carried a doctrine that was contagious. So everybody got it because of their belief system. That religious, they had a religious false doctrine because they were infected. In Genesis chapter 3. Now, I want you to grab hold of something because when you think about this, um, <clears throat> so we know that this, the virus, these viruses that we're talking about is the venom of a serpent or the serpents. And we know that there's the original serpent known as Lucifer or Satan who lost his beauty and became serpent. So when people get sick with a virus or whatever it is, where do they go? They usually go to a doctor or something to that degree. And what are the symbols of the medical? Two serpents. So what are they trying to do? They're just trying to medicate individuals. <laughs> Does everybody get this? They're trying to cure a virus with basically nothing but something that comes from the same serpent. Does everybody get it? Because it's nothing but deception, isn't it? Again, if you break your leg or hurt yourself, they give you a pain pill. It doesn't heal you. Amen? It just deceives you. And then people get addicted to it, don't they? And then one thing leads to another. And Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, As God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God says you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you what? Die, because if she gets contaminated by the virus, She's going to die. Does everybody get this? And we know that's what happened, isn't it? Then the serpent said to the woman, you ain't going to die. And God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. You're going to be like God. He lied to her. Because anything that comes out of a serpent's mouth is nothing but a lie. And how many times does the enemy like to bring a curse on us? Amen? It's amazing in the trends that he tries to set. So people bring curses on themselves and don't even realize it. Look at uh, the, the trend. I don't know if it's still trendy now. I don't know, when everybody was piercing their tongues. Well, what's a pierced tongue represent? A serpent tongue. Amen? Does everybody get it? I mean, people were piercing, you know, whatever, and they would be piercing their tongues. I mean, I remember one time I walked up to someone and they were talking to me. <laughs> I was waiting for them to swallow whatever was in their mouth. Man, swallow that piece of candy or something, will you? 
So I can understand what you're saying. <laughs> you know, <laughs> spitting all over the place. And finally, they opened her I, I saw the silver thing in her mouth. I'm thinking, I thought you were chewing the candy. What is it? I, my pierced tongue. What an idiot. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we know that the original, from the original serpent who was Lucifer, who became a serpent, is the one who's a carrier. He's the original carrier of this virus. And it comes in many forms. All kinds of forms in this viruses. In 1 Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4, <clears throat> hallelujah, in verse 1. Is everybody there? Amen. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will what? Depart. Depart from the faith, taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Doctrines of demons is false doctrine. It's a doctrine that promotes virus. Does everybody get it? Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own, con own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. These are doctrines of demons. It is a secular belief system. The secular belief system carries spiritual viruses. In verse 1, is everybody there? Hallelujah. You know, that's why we, we got a teaching called, you know, I think it's talking about junk food, you know. Because there's an area when, when it's brought by the anointing of Christ, the word of God is expressed by the anointing. It's food for life. Does everybody get it? It's food for life. When there's a doctrine that is not according to the anointing of Christ, it's junk food. And junk food always carries a virus. It's like spoiled. In verse 1, let's speak it together. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we receive mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Look at, remember, the virus always brings, that's the end result is death, isn't it? To those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has what? blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Two things that begin to happen from the virus, blindness begins to manifest. Spiritual blindness and spiritual dummy. It's called a deaf and dumb spirit. They cannot comprehend light. So when you and I were born into this world, we were actually born with this virus Amen? Amen? And we are destined to death. And we could not comprehend light. And we were blinded to the truth. In fact, we were blinded to the unseen realm. And that's what this virus does. That's the serpent's desire. That's the enemy's desire. See, if he can stay hidden from me and you, he can deceive you even better. He said, for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is God who has commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in what? Earthen vessels. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not me and you, not us. The effects, again, of the virus are, is spiritual blindness, again, which we are born with, 
That's why we need to be born again. Amen? Because one of the things we do is we repent. Remember when the leopards saw Jesus, they said, they cried out to him and they said, would you cleanse us? And he said, yes. And so he cleansed them from leprosy, which was a, a, a virus, wasn't it? And it's the same thing because when you and I repent for our sins and anything we've done, we are washed by the blood so that virus begins to get cleansed. It gets dissolved. Does everybody understand that? There are other effects of the virus because it begins to affect our, when you and I were born, our DNA was different. We have a new DNA by being born again now. Amen. I'm going to share a couple of effects of uh, this virus. Compromise. Complacency. Laziness. Procrastination, addiction, pride, lust, fear, evil desires. I can go on. But these are some of the effects because there's fruits of a virus, just like there's the fruits of a presence of evil, isn't there? Compromise, complacency, laziness, procrastination, addiction, pride, lust, fear, evil desires. And we've talked about those before. That's why the word tells us to bring self-examination. Self-examination. See, when we get into the presence of the Lord, we come and see the doctor. <laughs> As we begin to praise and worship the Lord, man, we're... we're you know, the Holy Spirit brings something to you. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I forgot about that. You're getting cleansed. He's cleansing you. He's cleansing you from the virus. He's cleansing you from that venom. So that you can walk free without any bondage. In 1 John chapter 2. You know, you can see when people are bit. Their continence changes. What about rebellion? Isn't that a part of a virus? Amen. Listen, your old man is contaminated, let me tell you. That's why you want to stay as far away from the old man as possible. And I don't mean your ex-husband. Hello. I mean the old man you were born with. Although some of you need to stay away from your ex-husbands too. Right? <laughs> we won't go there tonight, okay? Or your boyfriend, ex-boyfriends. <laughs> First John chapter two, verse fifteen. Who's the ruler, ruler of the earth? Satan. Remember, the secular system is contaminated. Amen. And that's why it says here: Do not love the world or the things in the world. Why? Because you're going to be contaminated too. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So one of the things this virus does is prevent you from receiving the love of God. Does everybody get that? See, so many times we get to this place where it's hard for us to receive the love of God because we've touched something that's brought that virus. If anyone loves the, loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the what? Loss of the flesh the loss of the eyes and the pride of life. Oh, hello. It's not of the Father, but it's what? Of the world. Those are definitely effects of the virus. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God does what? Abides forever. Abides forever. Again, the, the world is infected with this virus, which leads to death. It is a secular system. In Matthew 13. Think about a virus in a computer. <clears throat> That's all somebody has to do is send you an email. You know, if you don't open it up, it doesn't manifest. 
But if you open it up, that's where the enemy sends these paper airplanes. We pick it up and go, oh, oh. Then we read it. It says, you're an idiot. Oh, my God, I'm an idiot. <laughs> or whatever. You know. He loves to send these little paper airplanes and whatever, and you just pick them up. You're walking in your boundaries. You're not going beyond the boundaries. But he sees, see, he can't come across the boundaries, so he sends a paper airplane or some message. And then we'll be walking all of a sudden, boop. Oh, that's, and we pick it up. Oh. And we freak out because we actually believe what we just heard instead of rejecting it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but even when you open up that email, what happens, you don't even realize that your computer's been contaminated with a virus. So you just be going along just like you're normal, you know. When you get contaminated, you don't realize. Next thing you know, something happens, you're in the flesh. You're reacting like you ain't reacted before. That's a fruit of the presence of that virus. That's when you got to stop. Oh, snap. I've been contaminated. Lord, I repent. Wash me with the blood. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. And heal me with the stripes of Jesus. And you know what you got to do? Command that spirit to go. For he begins to lay eggs. Those are called corruptible seeds. See, if you could see truly in the spirit realm, it would blow you away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 10. Glory to God. Matthew 13, verse 10. Is everybody there? And the disciples came and said to Jesus, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it's not been given. What an honor that is. You know why we're in this room? Because it's been granted to us to know the mysteries. For whoever has to him more will be given and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore, I speak to them in parables because seeing they don't, they do not see. And hearing, and it's not that they don't, they refuse to. Does everybody get it? Hearing, they don't, uh, seeing they don't, they refuse to see. And hearing, they refuse to hear. And they do not what? Understand. They don't understand. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see, and shall not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown what? Dull, contamination, virus. See, when you lose your zeal, I'm going to say when you lose your zeal, something is taking it. Contamination. I see more people jump at the football bait football game, basketball game, or sports, or whatever it is, instead of coming into God's presence. and you know, One of the things that contamination of the, the virus does is put things out of, uh, it moves things out of order, so there's no longer a divine order. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard to, of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears lest they should understand with their hearts and turn and I should what? Heal them. Heal them of what? The virus. Amen. 2 Timothy 2. Spiritual viruses. In verse 14. 2 Timothy 2, verse 14. It says, remind them of what? These things charge them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. 
And their message will spread like what? Cancer. Is cancer a disease? Yeah, man, it's a virus. Hymenius and Philetus are of the sort who have strayed concerning the truth. Why? Because they got contaminated. Saying that the resurrection has already passed and they overthrow the faith of some. Never, nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are what? His, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So cancer is a sort of a virus, isn't it? It is a venom. So when you talk about virus, you must look at it as a venom. In James chapter 4. Did you ever get around somebody that's just always miserable? I mean, no matter what you try to do or say, they're just, eh, they just don't want to be encouraged. You know, they just, they just don't want it. Now, they're definitely contaminated. James 4 and verse 1, let's speak it. Word of wars and fights come from among you. Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? I want you to grab hold of something because we talked about evil desires. The reason why the evil desire is there is because, it's because the desire has been contaminated with a virus, venom. And whether these desires, because uh, you, uh, you do not come, do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You do what? You lust, lust. Overwhelming desire, right? You lust and do not have. You murder, covet, and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. And when you ask, you don't receive because you ask it amiss that you may spend it on your, your evil pleasures, which have been contaminated. Adulterers and adulteresses. Well, there's some viruses right there. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Why? Because the serpents are enemies of God, aren't they? Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the venom. I mean, the prideful. Does everybody get it? He resists it. But he gives grace to the humble. Humble can only come through repentance. Amen. Is everybody okay? God resists the virus of pride. Second Peter chapter 2. You know, there's the virus associated with love of money, which we talked about, and greed. Amen? Some people are so stingy, they squeak when they walk. <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. It's a squeaky virus, man, let me tell you. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 2. <laughs> Is everybody there? Good, verse 1. <laughs> Glory. Let's speak it. But there are, were also false prophets among the people, even as there were be what? False teachers among you. You will what seek who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. Why? Because they, they will be contaminated teachers, prophets. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment is not has been idle, and their <clears throat> destruction does not slumber.
For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them to the chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would what? Live ungodly. Ungodly is a representation of being contaminated. And delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries where angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. These are contaminated individuals with the virus, the venom virus. And there are false teachers and false prophets even right now all over. That's why you have so much goofy religion. There would be no denominations. Does everybody get it? There wouldn't be any if they hadn't been affected. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Hallelujah. In verse 9. Is everybody there? Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? So if there's a fruit of unrighteousness, does it mean there's contamination? Yes. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were what? You were washed. In other words, you were cleansed from the virus. But you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. And too many people get brought under the power. Some people get brought under the power of food. Some people get brought under the power of amusements and things to that degree. But we don't want to be under the power of anything. We don't want to be totally free. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. It's just nothing but an overwhelming desire, isn't it? So you can be addicted to multiple things. It's the fruit of the, fi the virus. There are people that are workaholics. It's amazing how as many people have come, tried to come off of addiction by themselves, so they try to keep themselves busy, but they're still contaminated. Man, if I, if I don't stay busy, I'm going to blow it. Well, that's torment. 2 Timothy 4. Some people, when they get frustrated and whatever, instead of going to prayer, they run to the refrigerator and empty it. Hello? In other words, we don't want to be brought under the power of anyone. We go through stuff. We don't go to the world for fulfillment. We go to the Lord for fulfillment. Because what begins to happen is the enemy wants to bring a self-destruction. Does everybody understand that self-destruction? That's why when even people when who are out drinking or some people will fall because they get frustrated with something and they go back to the old way. Because actually, in reality, they've stepped, they've been, they've been bit, they're, that virus is there, and it says, I'm going to produce death in you. So what they go to is they start to bring into a self-destructive mode. 
they don't care. In ver- is everybody there? Verse 1, I charge you therefore, let's speak it together. 2 Timothy 4, verse 1, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead as appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their what? Own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be what? Watchful. watchful. Does everybody understand that? Everybody say watchful. watchful. That means that you and I got to be sensitive. We must be alert to be able to notice, recognizing these things so they don't overtake us. Look at it. There isn't one person here that's not going to make a mistake. Amen? If you think you're never going to make a mistake, you're an idiot. It's real plain and simple. Every one of us is going to make a mistake at some time. Unfortunately. I mean, nobody wants to make a mistake. We all want to just be perfect. Amen? But we're perfect in him, not in us. That's why we have to constantly depend on him. But in that, we're going to make a mistake, and it's what you do with that mistake. It's not that you made the mistake. It's what you do with it is vitally important so that we can recognize these things so that when that same enticement, that same serpent comes up closer again to the boundaries, when he comes up closer, you get close to the boundaries and he begins to speak to you or that paper airplane comes across the boundaries and you begin to pick it up, you'll be sensitive enough You'll be alert. You'll be ready to say no. Say no. Amen? That's why it says here in verse 5, let's speak it again. But you be what? Watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your mission. Everybody's been sent in this realm to fulfill a, a mission. Amen? In Matthew chapter 10. Matthew 10, 32. Let's speak it together. Therefore, whoever what? Confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I've come to bring peace on earth. I came, I did not come to bring peace, but a what? Sword, so that you can cut the serpent's head off. For I've come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Hallelujah. Verse 37. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves a son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will what? Find it. Will find it. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Everybody okay? Spiritual viruses. <clears throat> That's what the word warns us. Bad company corrupts good habits. Associations bring impartations. You hang around with people. That's why it's important that you shake the dust off every day. You kill every corruptible seed that's been imparted in you wherever you've been. Because you don't realize how many times you've been bit. And you don't have to agree with it to be bit. You just have to be around it. And next thing you know, you're bit. 
and you don't realize it. So that's why you kill those corruptible seeds, which are nothing but viper eggs. In verse 3, is everybody there? 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 3. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is what? Proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over every word, from which come envy, strife, reveling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain, from such withdraw yourself. Now godliness with contentment is great gain, but we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and snare, and to many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil or viruses, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with what? Many sorrows. Wow. He says, but you, O men and women of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and patience. And do what? Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Let me share something quickly because sometimes it's not just what you avoid. It's what you embrace. Does everybody get it? Sometimes we're always trying to look to what avoid, but sometimes we don't realize it's what we just embraced. Amen? Second Peter chapter 1. In other words, embracing something is agreeing with something that is not a pleasing to God. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. There's a place where there are no viruses. It's only in his divine nature. That's what he's trying to get to me and you all the time. In verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of, our, of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power <clears throat> has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by the glory of virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, which is associated with his word, that through these you may be what? Partakers of the divine nature where there is no virus. No virus can exist in there. Why? Because to maintain it, you're always cleansed by the blood. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Through lust. But also, for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted. That means if that person's been snagged. Even to what? Blindness, because that's the fruit, isn't it? And it's forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will neither, never be what? You'll never what? Stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I'm going to close at 2 Corinthians 6. Just a simple reminder tonight.
spiritual viruses. You know, when <clears throat> somebody gets dirty, they go and wash themselves physically. Well, when you get contaminated, you need to go wash yourself spiritually. Because we're all going to touch something. It's a matter of maintaining that cleansing. 2 Corinthians 6.14, is everybody there? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does it say? Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? And what part has a believer with an unbeliever? So what is he doing? He's warning us of those things that we will catch the virus. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? idols? How many of y'all know an idol is a virus? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. If they will come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean. Everything associated with unclean is a spiritual virus. And I will receive you. I'll be a father to you. You shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved. Why are these promises? These promises are so that you're able to partake of the divine nature. Having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Reverence, honor, and respect. When the fear of God is gone, you know you got a virus. Amen? Spiritual viruses. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask again tonight that, actually, I want to take this opportunity. Everybody repeat after me. Holy Father, Holy Father I, repent I repent for any association, for any association with, any force. with any demonic force. I command in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus that, every seed, that every corruptible seed or any viper eggs, any viper eggs that have been placed in me, placed in me any fiery dart, that has penetrated my shield of faith. I command in the name of Jesus that they wither and die and no longer have any effect. I command every spiritual demonic virus to loosen to leave me, asking you to wash us with the blood, cleanse us with the blood, and heal us with the stripes of Jesus, that we may walk, partake in the divine nature, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.